Hello there game makers, this is OneUp Indie and today I wanted to show you grid based movement which you see in the original uh, roguelite games or let's say for example Enter the Void and other games which are based on a grid. So bam, this is what I'm going to show you. Of course you can actually go out of the grid, this is just a basic tutorial. So what I'm going to show you how you can actually do this grid based movement with a short delay so for example i'm pressing the button quite fast but i cannot spam it and on the left side you see your turns which will be more uh, important in the upcoming video which is an advanced uh, version of this project here and then i'm going to show you how you actually can do a grid like this which will automatically spawn at the right positions so this is what i'm going to show you so stay tuned to get that stuff, I will just completely skip my intro. This is one up indie. Hello, and well, subscribe and share my stuff if you can. So let's kill all of that. Let's go, for example, into the room. So this is just basically a tile system. Um, so you can actually, I don't know, see the background and the foreground. Nothing special. And then we have those walls here, and they are kind of specific because what I'm do, I'm having this object which I call object grid. I put it one time in here, instances, and then yeah, under instances, and then it will draw a lot of those in here and just fill up, let's say, a specific space you want to have, and then later on it will check for collisions with the red thing which are those walls here which I just deactivated so uh, well in the end game you don't want to show them but they are still there and then if there is a collision but well, you don't draw them and then you just flag them for example what I do I just draw put an array in there so basically what I do I have an array and then I put in two positions, first of all, all your my X position and then Y positions, which I want to have. And then I will just call them I and J. And then for example, I'm having position like one, two, three, four, five for all X positions. And then next line for, this is a, a, a J of zero. And then the next J of one, so one, two, three, four, five, and this is how it actually works. So what you see, you just have fill off the first line, which is a J of zero, then J of one, and then J of three, and so on and so on. How does it actually look in practice? Basically, this thing here, I just give it, I once again create an array, but start at zero, zero, because this is our first thing which we want to draw in the end. So what we do, we draw all the grid arrays which are assigned a value of 1 in two loops, let's say 42 by 23, so basically 42 x positions times 23 positions, so we're filling up all those things which are in the red space, of course you can have different values but this is up, up to you how many you want to put in and then if they have a value of 1, well then they are being drawn, so I draw the sprite, which is this little thing, bam, nothing special. And I just basically draw them to their, well, on their according position, which is the first loop and the second loop, j of and, and y of 1 times 16, because the, the grid is 16 by 16, and then every, all positions are filled in. So let's do this. We can actually kill this one so we actually see the result. So first of all, I have the array. Then I do my first loop and inside the first loop for all the X positions, I have a Y position and then I, I fill up the array on with all X positions and Y positions. So basically all the positions which are possible, then give them a value of one. So for example, once we start, then you will see that, well, from the start point, which was this one here, all are being drawn. But maybe I don't want to have uh, uh, all the positions, I just want to have those ones which are basically on the plane field, so here. So once again, I just do again two loops. Once again, 
one for loop and inside the next for loop and then every time we are having a collision so we just run this once per start of the game this is the neat part so you don't have to worry about that later on this is just once in the create event and when we are having a collision with object wall object walls are those uh, instances which are put in here the red ones here and then we flag this specific position if there is a collision with zero and then well, if it's zero it won't be drawn and this is how it works and so let's say we start again if somebody's stealing a car outside nice um <laughs> then what what you see here only those spaces which are not red are having a grid and then of course well this is being used for me to move on it for now i'm not really using it this is just for me to understand how actually that stuff works come on steal it faster um yeah so the next thing is then for example the player and then what i wanted to show you is just oh come on um what i do i first of all have two variables the first one is can move and then the other one is just turn turn is just on the top left corner so once you start then you have specific turns and then you can move and maybe if you have like some enemies and other things they can move as well so for example i move once and twice my turns go up and this is how a turn-based system actually works and then well what i do i just say hey can you move then you i run my script which is input which i use a lot of times but here i say keyboard check then release so every time i release my button let's say a d w and s i sign it left right up and down then well, they're getting the value of one because if i press i get one if i'm not pressing it then it will stay zero and then i say hey have i pressed actually one and i can move so this variable is used here again for a very specific purpose and um, then well move for example if you're moving right then because you're on a grid teleport 16 pixels to the right and then well, update the turn set the alarm to half a second so actually the can move b is being flagged true because of what i do and saying once i for example pressed it can move is false and then all the other ones are getting left out so for example i cannot press right left at the same time because here then well nothing would happen or for example you, you could press right and up then you would have a diagonal movement which i don't want therefore well, you are pretty much cutting out all the other parts and then well the alarm kicks in can move is false and then you cannot put in, in any input then well you have a short delay and this is how it works let's kill that here for example once again we start we update our position and just move on the grid of course we can go out bam but it does work and as you can see i spam the button but i can just move well let's say kind of slow and this is just basically how it works of course you can do some more fine tuning let's say i did here but this is not part of the tutorial and of course you just flip your image index or use other ones and of course it definitely looks better and then you have the traditional rpg turn-based system this is how it works of course there are other ways out you can do that but uh, let's say for example you're having let's say 10 turns then the the enemies can have 10 turns and so on but this is just a thing which is dynamically for all the instances because then they can do stuff and this is basically it hopefully that was of interest to you and if you want to know a little more stuff this kind of concept then well watch the follow-up video with the advanced tutorial have a good one one up indie